Welcome to Hashtag Wednesdays Weekly, a weekly information session in collaboration with voluntary sector and public sector partners. The session today is on volunteer manager training and will be delivered by Laura Augustine and Phil Greenwood from Action Together. Over to you, Laura and Phil. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, what a nice, lovely day to have some training indoors. Um, <clears throat> so um, on this session, which is uh, due to last an hour, we're going to go through some volunteer manager or coordinator training. Um, and Laura's just sh um, shared the screen to um, to show you what we're going to be covering. Um, may I just say, first of all, that um, this is the volunteer manager training. In a uh, week's time, we have the civic training. And we would encourage everybody on um, this uh, call to also book on the civic training because the civic training shows you how to use our systems and how to um, get uh, volunteers and how to put your own adverts on. So it's a really good uh, informative uh, session to be on. So we would encourage you all to, to book on to the next uh, civic training as well. Um, could you just pull up the next? So what we're going to do today, um, you know, uh, really talk about volunteer managers and the kind of things um, that, uh, in our opinion, you should be kind of looking to do. Um, but this is a, a very a much a, um, a joining session. So we're going to have a breakout room and we're going to talk about things and, and express things. So volunteer managers are responsible for uh, selecting training and supervising and um, the volunteers of an organisation. Uh, volunteer managers typically are responsible for uh, activities and spend a lot of time working independently um, and making their own decisions. And uh, sorry, there's just a, a comment come up that's blocking the last one. Right, okay. Um, and a volunteer manager must be able to communicate effectively with volunteers. It's all standard stuff. Um, obviously, we're just going to run through these slides. These slides will be sent to you afterwards. Um, so that's the, the first kind of um, things we'd like to say about volunteer uh, manager training. Over to you, Laura. Thank you. OK, so now I'm going to take you through some volunteer manager coordinator functions. So things you as a volunteer manager should be doing, um, which probably most of you are at the moment. Um, so it's a good idea at the moment. Now I'll take you through these. If you could have a think about yourselves as volunteer managers, how you sort of do each one. So when we go into the breakout rooms, we'll be sort of having discussions about each sort of subject. Um, so number one, recruiting volunteers. So recruiting volunteers would start with obviously the role description. You need to a role description together of what you're looking for, for that role from a volunteer. So as much information as possible so the volunteer understands the role, when they're gonna be needed, times, days, etc. cetera. Um, Volunteer managers, you, as yourselves, you should try and sort of advertise in a variety of methods to attract suitable candidates. Um, so that might be placing adverts online, um, attending job fairs when allowed. Obviously, at the moment, we haven't been able to do that um, in hope of meeting new volunteers. And obviously, if you're a member of ours, role descriptions can be put onto our website, like we will show you next week, again, how to do yourself in the civic training. Um, but at the moment, myself and Phil are putting roles on for quite a lot of the members. Um, and then also they can be put onto our newsletter, which goes out every two weeks. Um, but we can also put it onto our social media for you. So to try and get a good, a good amount of volunteers um, for your role. Um, and then onto induction and training. So a part of recruiting, obviously an induction, when you find volunteers that, that are suitable, um, you should try and con conduct induction sessions. And the purpose of a, uh, an induction is to welcome volunteers into your group or organization. Um, give them an, an idea of the role that they'll be doing and what it entails. Um, on a usual sort of day, you'd sort of give a volunteer a tour of the building where they'll be volunteering from, but obviously depending online or in person, that may not be possible at the moment. So for the example, for the community warehouse, which we're supporting at the moment, our volunteers that are volunteering there, um, myself and Phil have been carrying out inductions online for them, um, which is like a PowerPoint, goes through everything that they need to know. Um, but from May the 17th, I think, um, Phil's allowed to attend the, uh, attend the warehouse to do the inductions in person, which obviously is a lot more of a better personal approach. You get to find out more about a volunteer in person than you do, obviously, on Zoom. 
Um, and then training, obviously any training that's necessary for their role is your responsibility as a volunteer manager to make sure they have the training needed. Um, whether it's in-house, whether so yourself or someone in your team can train them or external training. Um, for example, the warehouse volunteers needed manual handling and food hygiene, which we source for them. Um, so now they're all, they've all got that, that qualification, um, which is what they need for their role at the warehouse. Um, scheduling volunteers. So the volunteer, you as a volunteer manager will work closely with the volunteers and other members of your team to come up with a schedule that suits everyone. So when volunteers are needed, which days, times, and how they'll fit into around other volunteers and staff members you may have in your organization. Um, determining the need for volunteers. So some volunteers will stay with an organization or group for a very long time, but others tend to volunteer for like weeks or even months at a time, and then they'll stop. So as volunteer manager, it's kind of your, your role to be able to anticipate the changes um, and then obviously find cover as needed. So one of our one of our volunteers, um, we through communicating obviously on a regular basis with the volunteer, we found out they were looking for a role, for obviously a paid role, um, and they'd applied for a job and they got accepted. So we were able to obviously get that role covered um, by the time this volunteer left. So it's very important, obviously, to know these changes and plan accordingly. You don't want to be left short, especially if if you may have like as things are starting to open up, where you may have a big event planned. Um, and you'll need extra volunteers, you need to make sure you, you cover everything that's needed. Um, and the final one, volunteer wellbeing. So how do you look after your volunteers' wellbeing? Um, it's an interesting one. This one wasn't initially on the PowerPoint, but then we thought that's probably one of the most important ones as a volunteer manager. How do you make sure your volunteers are, feel looked after, feel welcome, not just about the volunteering, but in their personal life as well, if they have any issues, how, how are you looking after your volunteers? Um, I know for us, regarding the warehouse and the street ambassador scheme that we currently have at the moment, um, we have sort of monthly Zoom sessions, um, which they can attend and hear important updates, but also address any issues or talk about anything that they need to talk about. And um, we also have a, a volunteer Facebook page um, and Phil carries out monthly wellbeing checks to the volunteers, not just to find out how the role is going, but to find out how they are themselves in themselves, which is very important. Um, so yeah, a few things for you to think about. Um, we're going to put you into breakout rooms in a minute. Um, so there's gonna be five breakout rooms. Um, if you're in breakout room one, when you get asked to go into a breakout room, it's just say which room you're going into. So if you're in breakout room one, it'd be great if you could have a discussion about recruiting volunteers, how you sort of go about recruiting um, up until Breakout room two, if you could talk about induction and training, how you go about inducting and training or sourcing training for your volunteers. And um, breakout room three, scheduling volunteers. Um, so how do you work together with the other volunteers to fit new volunteers in where needed? Um, breakout room four, determining the need for volunteers. Uh, and then breakout room five, if you could have a discussion about volunteer wellbeing, that would be great. Um, and if possible, if one person in each room would be able to like note down a, key, a few key words or key points that I mentioned, uh, and we'll feed back when you come back into the main room. So I'll just stop sharing my screen for a moment. To do, we're just going to take um, a minute just to have a bit of reflection on what was said in the breakout rooms. So, in room one, which was about recruit, mm -hmm. was Carmel, Diane, and Kareen. Um, I don't know who wants to kind of feed back from that room. Any any volunteers? Uh, I was going to feed back on what who? we discussed. Me, okay. Diane. Okay, Diane. <laughs> um, right. So if you, if you can just give us kind of um, a kind of sentence or a few words of, of, about what was the what was the feeling in that room? So basically, obviously, at the moment we're doing a lot of online recruitment and social media and through yourselves. Yep. But then also um, uh, from Burnside Community Centre, they they sort of um, have service users who are going into the project, and they tend to focus on they may have a particular interest, and then they go into um, volunteering from expressing that interest and being part of the community, um, and that also works quite well in terms of retaining volunteers because they're invested in it. So they do that or, or, and they've never really had to advertise. Uh, and then we talked a lot about 
sometimes it's word of mouth and networking with other organizations and then um, Carmel's from like the job center as well so people who maybe aren't quite ready for work but want to do a little bit of volunteering that meets their skills or what they eventually want to do so that was kind of summarized of the conversation that we had thank you thanks very much as you can see um uh, Laura's uh, printing out on the screen and like I said you will get copies of these uh, sent out to you so so you'll um, uh, so you be, be take time to read these so the the second one was about um, uh, training volunteers in induction and it was Haley, uh, James and Naomi anyone want to feedback from that? You should know it'd be me, Felly. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's so. funny. It's funny before <laughs> before <laughs> when we were having this discussion. Laura goes, "Oh, it'll be no, Naomi." <laughs> you know me so well. Um, yeah, we we're, were saying that it's been very different. You know, like doing training induction, especially like over the COVID. You know, because it's um, you know, it's just been very difficult because normally you need to be face to face a lot of the time to do anything. Um, but we were saying also it's very tailored. You know, to to each in, each individual organisation, everybody's inductions for their organisations aren't going to be the same because obviously it's it's for your specific volunteers and your their roles. Um, but we we're saying as well that you know it, it's good sometimes to collaborate and get you know like you know like the action together stuff and you know like we health watch watch they'll hopefully will be you know doing some stuff and it and we we're saying about a lot of it's costing as well with training. You know, it can be very very costly. Um, volunteers. You don't want them to be paying that's why the volunteers you know um and stuff so it's we was you know we were saying that hopefully now this, this the covid restrictions are lifting and we can get a bit more in-house training back face to face because a lot of, i was saying a lot of my volunteers are 68 plus you know and they find it very difficult quite a few of them to use online training zooms and stuff um but yet they're, they're brilliant when you're in a room one-to-one -one with them as you know everyone's learning's different in it you know yeah. um so yeah so yeah that was in a nutshell <laughs> yeah. okay that's great Naomi thanks very much uh, the third one was about scheduling volunteers and it was Lauren, Lorraine and Louise, all the L's. Um, is there going to be someone to give me feedback from that room? Yeah, so I was um, I was the volunteer to um, to make some notes on that one. Good. Um, so we we confess that we missed the little um, jitty at the side of scheduling volunteers, but we just um, kind of put our heads together and came up with what we thought. Um, so obviously, um, I work for Rochdale Connections Trust. I'm a youth project coordinator on the, um, a mentoring project. Um, and um, we have a bank of volunteers. Um, so when we're scheduling them, we're looking at things like, you know, rotors, flexibility, availability, the hours that they're available, um, understanding our volunteers and the things that they've got going on in their lives. Um, looking at skill sets, matching processes so that the correct volunteer match to the young person. Um, the training needs, um, time slots um, for supervision, um, manage, you know, whether they're manageable, um, who is available when, ongoing support and training um, and maintaining regular contact and kind of putting that all within um, a structured process to give the support that the volunteers need. That's, that's great. Um, and, and full marks for, um, for Laura for typing that quickly, because that was... Uh, <laughs> that oh, was sorry, some... I didn't know. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's great. I'm then, it, sorry, guys. <laughs> it's, it's great. There was so much feedback. I'm just I'm laughing at the, the speed that Laura's typing at the same time. That's well, wonderful. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and the fourth was determining the need for volunteers. And Geraldine, Mary and Mohammed were in that. I, as, uh, can we have a feedback from somebody on that, please? Um, that would be me, Phil. It's Geraldine. Hello, can Geraldine. Can you see yeah. me up here? Yeah. Um, so what we did, we, we, we looked at the needs of the organisation and also the needs of, of volunteers. And um, we decided that we had to work around the needs of the volunteers um, because some of them might have jobs and other things that they might do from day to day. And um, due to COVID, we had to look at what, how the organisation had changed, how the needs had changed within the organisation. Um, so, for example, Mohammed needed help to, with young children, so he needed to make sure that he had other people that could drive or, or transport and that those people have DBSs. Um, Mary was in a similar position 
um, in that she she also needed drivers. Um, and she said that everything changed dramatically during the pandemic. Um, she was working with other organisations. Um, a lot of the things that she did were time sensitive. Um, for myself at Hotwood Hall, our, our things changed dramatically because we were restricted by rule of six. So although we'd love to have lots of volunteers in, um, we, we, we've been restricted by that. Um, um, and also Mohammed said that quite often people will find that they, they have other commitments. So he would often step in himself and, and do, do jobs so um, that other people might not be able to, to carry out. So that was pretty much changing things as they happened, really. That was the, the yeah. key to, to what we found. Yeah. That's great, uh, Jordine. Thank you for that. Um, and because originally there was there was five on here, and the, the fifth one was being uh, well-being. Um, well, I'll just give you a little um, insight from from us as, as far as well-being goes. We, we kind of think that um, if a volunteer volunteers with you for two hours a week or whatever, um, that's that's a very very um, small proportion of their time. And you don't know what's happening in the rest of their lives. And, and we are very keen to not just ask if someone's okay volunteering, but if someone's okay in their life. Because in their life, what they're doing in their life will, will ultimately decide whether they can volunteer with you. So we take a, 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 you know, um, a great um, uh, privilege to, to kind of go into someone's life and says look is there anything else that you need that we can help with um, and that may be signposting to a different organization it may be you know a very very simple thing but it, it's showing the that the the volunteer is um is um what's the wording um we like we like to look after every aspect of the volunteer to know that if they have an issue that they can come to us with whatever that issue is and and it, it's it's growing that a, a very good rapport with a with a volunteer so that's the the kind of five now um obviously like i, I keep saying you'll get you'll get copies of this so if we move on to slide five um So what makes a good volunteer manager? Well, two key things to have in place, in our opinion, um, before you even start recruiting volunteers, are a volunteer policy and a volunteer agreement. Um, I know a couple of people on this call have helped with these. Um, but just to give you a bit of information, if you need any extra support on policies and agreements, um, you can contact me outside of this session. Um, and obviously I'll set up a one-to-one -one support session with you. Um, but just so you have a slight idea. So a volunteer policy in general is a framework for a volunteer programme. It helps define the role of volunteers in your organisational group and how they can expect to be treated. Um, and a major advantage to having it, it not only shows the volunteer how committed you are to them, but also committed to their programme within your organisation. Um, so a few things just to touch on what should be included in a policy. Um, you should have your recruitment process, uh, which we've touched on induction and training, just an explanation of your processes and um, support and supervision expenses. Not all organisations cover expenses, but you find most do. Um, confidentiality, health and safety, complaint procedure if you have one in place, um, equal opportunities, insurance and data protection being very important. Um, also part of the induction, you should try and touch on confidentiality, health and safety and equal ops, um, just so the volunteer knows their responsibilities in them areas. Um, and then onto the volunteer agreement. So it is what it says. It's a description of the arrangement between the organization and a volunteer on the work that they'll carry out for you. It forms a volunteer what they can expect from the organization and also what they agree to undertake. Um, but no way whatsoever should a policy or an agreement be made to look like an official document, like an employer would make an, you know, a member of staff. Um, it's not contract, uh, contractual. Um, you should have a note on there to say that the agreement can be cancelled at any time, either by the volunteer or by yourself. Um, so it's 
obviously as a volunteer manager you, sh you should demonstrate a commitment to the involvement of the volunteers and having these policies in place shows that to the volunteers um so that's briefly covering policies and agreement like i said if you need any extra support on these subjects um contact me anytime and i'll can, I, can, can I just can i just say that you'll see lots of adverts on tv and they'll say have a financial um your um, a financial thing with us and and there's always something in it for them because they want to know about this and this and then they want to sell you one of their policies well this is the same thing but we don't want to sell you anything <laughs> this is a free service and we're going to go right okay we're going to help you as much as we can and we don't want a penny for it <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> so it's a great thing to do and, and Laura is becoming known as the queen of this as Naomi's shake, uh, nodding her head now um, and, and, I t and I tell you if you do nothing else have Laura just have a look at your your, your policies and stuff and, and you're maybe tweaking it a little bit maybe helping you a little bit free of charge wonderful wonderful to have Thank right you. Should, we, should we move on to six yeah I think six is you Phil yeah oh, um, sorry no. So, we thought we'd just have a, a, an open session where you can just shout at us. Um, so this is practical skills that you think a volunteer manager should have. So this could be anything. So I'm just looking for you to shout things out like practical skills that you think a volunteer manager should have. So go on, fire, fire away, and I'll pick on somebody. Naomi, come on. What's a practical <laughs> skill that a volunteer should have? Organisation. 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 Great. Any more? Come on. Need to be approachable. Approachable. Yep. Yeah. A people person. A people person. Yep. Yeah. Good communicator. Yeah. Excellent. Multitasker. Oh yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Have you seen? There's a lady saying that, not a fella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Compassionate. Compassionate. Come Understanding. On. Understanding and adaptable, was that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Adaptable. Time management. Kind. Yeah. Um, flexible. Yeah. Any more? Cooperative. Cooperative, yeah. Some big words here. I know. I know. Any more that you can think of? Do this, doesn't do this justice on next page. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give it away yet. <laughs> Any more that you can think of? Okay. So what we've done is the next slide, slide seven, shows some that we've already prepared. So again, I'll say that you'll get slide six, but slide seven says about communication, good consistency, being able to identify what's needed, flexibility, listening to feedback, show good understanding of the following areas, especially in uh, induction, health and safety, equal opportunities, safeguarding of required and data protection. Um, just going back for one second to what, what Laura said mm. about um, uh, policies and procedures and, uh, and um, a volunteer um, induction and, and paperwork that they have. Imagine if, if you are volunteering for, for an organization and they give you a volunteer handbook, um, which has all those things in that, that a member of staff would have with you. Yeah. Just make it, imagine how, how important that makes you feel or the importance that it gives you that you're being treated like a, a, a member of staff and all these things are put in place to help you. It really is needed. It's a very, very important thing to have. Right. Do we want to go back onto on to slide eight? Yeah. This is your right. Answer. So, um, Reward and, and recognition. Now, as you know, um, first of the seventh is Volunteers Week, and um, we. I'll, I'll start from the the bottom of the page up. So, on the uh, there's a funding that's going to open on the first of June, uh, and it's up to five hundred pounds. 
and it's to thank your volunteers. Um, the um, website or the uh, thing is there, and like I say, you'll all get a copy of this, and you can uh, you can um, advertise for it. Now, this is different than last year. So last year, you had to have um, a celebration within the within Volunteers Week, and we we recognise that this isn't going to be possible this year because of COVID and, and lockdown and what have you. So the the fund will be open for a two month period, um, but you have to be spent within a six month period. Now, those who are good with calculation and, and diaries will know that that means it could be for a Christmas celebration. So you could get you you could uh, apply for funding now and use it for a Christmas celebration or you could you could do it you know, uh, before Christmas as just a celebration uh, for vo for your for your volunteers um, but volunteers week is is a great opportunity to highlight your organization your volunteers um, and when we say this it's a great thing to highlight your volunteers it's a great way to involve your volunteers in uh, promoting your organization, but it's also a really damn good way of promoting your organization. Because a lot of people volunteer off word of mouth, as we know, if, if someone's been treated right. So it's great to, to really, um, through social media, um, um, you know, maybe take a, an interview with one of your with one of your volunteers um, about their experience volunteering with you but it's really good opportunity to push your your organization as well so yes you know it's all about saying thank you to your volunteers because it's been an unbelievable effort from all volunteers over the last 12 months it's been horrible with with covid and people have had to adapt and change and do different things and been put in difficult situations um but it's a great way um this 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 volunteers week to really push the importance your volunteers are to you um because that will increase the number of volunteers that want to that want to volunteer with you so um, is preparation, saying thank you. There's a logo and comms pack all from uh, Volunteers Week. There's a social media content and, and it tells you things like media and the MPs. And we all know um, loads of people use social media um, and it's more to do with quality than quantity. Yeah, it's having quality things put on there. But in Volunteers Week, you know, take loads of videos of of your, your volunteers. Action Together will be doing things over a, a four week period during Volunteers Week. So the first week will be about celebration. The second week will be about recruiting. Um, third week, I might ask for Laura for some help here. It's, it's about retaining. retaining. And the fourth yeah. week is, what's the word for the fourth week? Mm, I don't, I'm not sure. It's to do with action together and promoting what's, yeah. what we've done in the, the other three weeks. But So we are going to do things over a four-week period. Um, but it's really good, first of all, to get, if, if, you, want to do, um, if you want to treat your, your volunteers, to get your um, thing in for the funding as soon as possible, because there will be a limit to this funding. I don't know what it is, but there, there, there's always a limit to funding. So get your applications form in ASAP. That's ASAP. I would say within the first week of this, get your application forms in um, and uh, you'll plan something for, for your volunteers and your involve action together. Let's have logos flying around. Let's have social media things flying around. Let's get in the papers. Let's really push how important how important volunteers have been over this last year because we can all we can all say it's been it's been life changing i would think next slide yeah so just being a bit wary of time we have put two slides on the end here which you'll be able to read through in your own pleasure um it's just a bit of information on informal rewarding and more formal types of rewarding just to run through a couple of examples. So a simple form of informal reward is just a simple thank you. Um, include volunteers in some events, obviously when we can get out and about. 
um, make sure volunteers are aware of the difference they make to your organisation and try and involve them in a bit of decision making. Um, again, you can have a read through these in more detail um, when you send the slides. Uh, and just a few examples of some formal kind of rewarding. So offer development opportunities in their role. So this is a chance for them to develop in any sort of way, make sure they're involved. Offer them a chance to maybe shadow someone else in the, in the organisation that they can learn a bit more from. Um, offer your volunteers taster sessions related to their role. You invite volunteers to meetings that affect them. When offer me action together, I started as a volunteer last year, in October 2019, and I was invited to all the meetings. Um, to be fair, whether they were to do with me or not, I was there. Um, so that's great, and I felt really sort of involved. Um, and let your volunteers take part in volunteer events, i.e. Volunteers Week. Um, so just a few examples of formal reward in there. Um, and yeah, open to any questions. Um, slides will be sent out. If you need any extra support, we're available. Well, I'm available every day for those three days a week. Um, <laughs> Do you want to just uh, put it on full screen? Or... Oh, yeah, sorry. So, um, at the end of that very quick run through, which it has been a quick run through, um, is there any questions? We just don't have to hold your hands up, just fire away with any questions. <laughs> 